Uh, good afternoon. Uh, a really warm welcome to you all. Uh, thank you for coming here today. My name is Kamlesh Patel and as you're aware I was appointed as chair of Yorkshire County Cricket Club on Friday, uh, bonfire night, 5th of November. Um, I'd like to make a, an opening statement as I take on this role position uh, before opening the floor up to some questions. I've been appointed with a clear remit of righting the wrongs of the past and making sure that this club is an inclusive home for aspiring players of the future. The revel revelations about complaints of racial discrimination and their handling at this cricket club over the past 18 months have rocked the sporting world. But let me be clear from the outset, racism or any form of discrimination is not banter. It's simply not acceptable. My heart goes out to anyone who has experienced racism or discrimination or abuse of any kind. This has been a painful and difficult period for Yorkshire County Cricket Club and all those associated with it. I thank Azim Rafiq for his bravery in speaking out. Azim is a whistleblower and should be praised as such and he should have never have been put through this. And I'd like to apologise to him. We're sorry for what you and your family experienced and the way in which we've handled this. What happened to you must never happen again to anyone. As an outsider coming into this situation, it's clear to me that we've handled this issue badly and the investigation was flawed. We need to learn from our mistakes and ensure the right people in place and ensure we do better. Not only in terms of the root issues of racism or discrimination, but also how as a club we deal with any issues that arise going forward. Clearly there's a problem. And I've been appointed to see if this cl club is institutionally racist and how we can address that. Part of my role will be to examine and be clear about what errors have been made in the handling of Azim Rafiq's complaints, both in terms of the investigation and the actions required following it and how we can learn from them. Another part of my role will be to examine the report which looks at several specific instances of alleged racism. But for me, not necessarily the totality of the issue. And I'm determined to look at the pattern of behaviours which could suggest institutional racism within the club. How this manifests itself and what we can do about it. But clearly this is a complex issue, a complex situation and it won't be easy. While some strides have been made in the area of racism across the world of sports, this episode highlights a huge amount of work that still needs to be done. There's a clear need for an urgent and seismic change starting from within. And I'm determined to lead this club to a better and more positive future. I maybe I should just say a few words about myself. Um, I'm a proud Yorkshireman. Growing up in Bradford, having left Kenya with my family at the age of one. Uh, and I've experienced racial abuse throughout my life. And some of my earliest childhood memories are of overt and painful racism. It's an experience that I think I've shared with a, a few of you in the past before. Um, when I was a child, I was 
a really fast runner. Uh, a bit slimmer than I am now. Um, why was I a really fast runner? Because almost every other weekend or every weekend, a local group of skinheads would like to go out and engage in packy bashing. You had to run or you got beaten up. So it's fairly obvious that words like packy in any context can never be banter. Actually, uh, cricket saved me. Uh, I was a pretty tiny little scrawny kid. Uh, but I became captain of the school cricket team. And that gave me a different standing. Uh, it, I didn't get beaten up anymore. Um, and thanks to my PE teacher, I went on to play in the Bradford League uh, and other leagues around Yorkshire. I loved the game and I believe in sports as a real driving force for, for good, for bringing us together and uniting us. That's the light I want to bring back here. In my professional career, probably because of my experiences, I've been motivated to help people, other people. Whether in social work, as a social worker, or working with drug users, having set up many drug services across the country and here in Yorkshire, with people who have mental health challenges, and particularly with prisoners, uh, rehabilitated prisoners. My whole life has been about organisational change and tackling injustice. I've been fortunate also to have worked at the England and Wales Cricket Board, uh, and my focus there was good governance and good stewardship. And also working with colleagues across the world of cricket, uh, I helped to produce, many of you will know, the South Asian Action Plan to increase engagement and participation in our game. And I spent a lot of years doing that. So it's sad where we've come to at the moment and I need to deal with that. But so throughout my working life, I fought against discrimination, uh, including a, a major five-year government project on tackling institutional racism in mental health care. I fundamentally believe we have good people fighting for change. From all our members, to our thousands of volunteers, to the players, to the staff, to the support staff, I'm sure together we can educate and inspire young people and communities to be the very best they can be. Inclusiveness, I suppose, runs through my blood. Inclusiveness for everybody. Yorkshire is my home and I want to make Yorkshire County Cricket Club a place for everyone from all backgrounds. In the last few days, literally two and a half days, I've spent much of my time speaking to as many people as possible connected to this great club. This club should be the pinnacle of English cricket and as a proud Yorkshireman myself, it pains me to see it in this situation. I fundamentally believe there should be a period of truth and reconciliation to get to the bottom of our culture and our processes to learn from our mistakes and re-establish trust. I think trust is a, a very much used word. But my experience, once it's shaken or broken, it's very hard to regain. Trust and transparency were the key words for my tenure. I'm committed to ensuring the club is wholly inclusive and actively anti-racist and anti-discriminatory from this point onwards. A club we can be proud of as people of Yorkshire and as a nation of cricket lovers. I do ask for space and time to listen and learn in order, I, in order that I can create a change that has impact, that is long lasting and that is authentic. It's essential that my first undertaking as chair 
is to listen to those who have experienced racism, experienced discrimination, experienced abuse, and to ensure their guidance is central, their guidance is central to how we move forward as a club. I urge others to come forward to share their experience. Yorkshire County Cricket Club should be a club for everyone in Yorkshire. And we're ready to listen, we're ready to believe, and we're ready to change. I suppose while I've been speaking today, I'm acutely aware of the need for actions, not just simply words. I've only been in the role for 72 hours at best. Um, so I ask for patience as I get to grips with the scale of the situation. I've had hundreds of messages from people from the world of cricket and beyond following my appointment. I want to thank them for their support and their heartfelt encouragement. And I apologise that I haven't managed to respond to each and every one of you, but I will do. There are many actions that we've taken since I was appointed on Friday. I want to announce that we've made the first vital step on what will be a long journey for this club. We've settled the employment tribunal case, the legal proceedings with Azim Rafiq. Absolutely no restrictions have been placed on Azim on what he can or cannot say about his experiences. The settlement, the settlement does not involve a non-disclosure agreement. The club was wrong to have asked Azim to agree to an NDA in the past, and he rightly refused. And we've apologised unreservedly for previously making that demand. Our offer means Azim will be free to speak about his experiences publicly. He is free to answer any questions that are put to him when he wants. And that includes the select committee hearing that's scheduled for the 16th of November. Second, as I said, we need to listen. I have asked for an independent whistleblowing hotline to be set up as quickly as possible. I want to curate a safe space for people to come forward with their disclosures. I have instructed for this to be set up quickly and will report on progress by the end of this week. We want anyone who may have suffered issues to come forward and I've noticed that some people who have come forward recently appear to have felt unable to step forward in Azim's case. This hotline will provide us with important data as to where the specific problems lie, so that we can begin to make improvements which are desperately needed. Its independence will allow any of those who felt silenced or intimidated to come forward in a safe place. Third, I will be commissioning a specialist independent review of processes and procedures on diversity and inclusion, including discrimination against those with protected characteristics, gender, race, religion, disability. We need to look at our processes and procedures around reporting incidents of racism, abuse, discrimination, or bullying of any kind, informed by what has happened here over the past 18 months. Our fans, the cricketing world, and the wider public need to trust that we are fit for purpose and we can deal with issues in a fair and a transparent way. My aim is to work together with a range of stakeholders to do this and this will be part of my future action plan. Fourth, in the spirit of transparency and in light of the investigations now underway, I have shared the full report with relevant parties who have a legal interest in this matter. Azim's lawyers, the England and Wales Cricket Board, the Equality and Human Rights Commission, and the chair of the Culture Media and Sports Select Committee. One thing that's really disturbed me this weekend 
and I'm deeply troubled by it. I'm deeply troubled to have learned over the weekend that some current staff have been harassed and even received death threats. I categorically condemn this. And I hope, and I have, and I will be seeking to make an appointment at the earliest opportunity with the Chief Constable of West Yorkshire to discuss this further. Nobody should feel discriminated against or abused, and that includes the staff here at Headingley. I can confirm that I've had discussions, meetings with the England and Wales Cricket Board about restoration of international cricket. We will have to demonstrate that we're addressing the root causes of the issues and that we are leading change before having any concrete conversations on that. On top of this, clearly the withdrawal of sponsors and international cricket has caused a financial hiatus. I've appointed Trevor Strain, uh, the managing director at Morrison's, who is a member of the, the board here, as our chair of audit and risk committee. And both Trevor and I will be having conversations with sponsors in the coming days. Finally, there's much more to be done, which will become clear to me in the coming days. Um, I'm happy to answer questions, but please be aware that I may not have answers for everything. I'm determined to make this club the beating heart of English cricket again. After 158 years, we're ready to change. We're ready to accept the past and we're ready to become a club which people can trust to do the right thing. Thank you.